So there's two things you should probably know about this game. One, it's a tactics JRPG and it's mostly gonna be story oriented and it has like weird sort of level structures and has a gigantic freaking mouse. Oh my God, look at the freaking size of this mouse cursor. It is ridiculously large and I have no idea why. And I don't know if that's a bug or if it's supposed to be like that. But according to some of the in-game menus, I assume it's supposed to be like that. This is just the intro thing that they play whenever you go in here. Anyways, Michael here. And today we're gonna be checking out Lost Dimensions, which I saw the screenshots for this and it really didn't draw me in. The graphics kind of look very simple and they are. But at the same time, it said it's a tactics JRPG and I'm like, you know what? Sure, let's go ahead and give it a shot. And the developer sent me a review key. So I'm like, all right, well now I definitely have to. So yeah, we're gonna end up checking it out. Now I've played through a bit of it. My controller just randomly turned off. Did my batteries literally just die while I'm like trying to record? Okay, that was weird. Yes, I would like to use my controller. <laughs> Whoops, sorry, that wasn't supposed to happen. Anyway, so I've been playing for a little bit of it, and I was like, all right, you know what? I kind of like it, but at the same time, there's a lot of problems with it. But anyways, let's go ahead and go into it. I'm messing with the format of the Checking Out series, by the way, so apologies that this doesn't go as fluently as it normally does. Anyway, so I played for about an hour in the game, and they start off introducing you to this nice little villain guy. They have this really cheesy sort of intro thing that's it's hilarious, the people's faces. I'll show the people's faces, just the people's faces. It's fucking fantastic. I don't know why. It's not good, but like it just it's like almost B movie, but like anime style, and it's it made me laugh like seven times because I tried to record this game and it has a bunch of technical issues I'll talk about in a little bit. Anyway, so here we are at the main hub. You get into this section right after the tutorial, and basically you're able to do a few things. One, you're able to talk to people, so it has all these dialogue options and stuff. So you can end up talking to all of your crew and talking about who they are and you know what they're doing. Basically, the game starts off with everyone's memories getting screwed up by this guy called the End, which is like the whole end game boss. It literally shows it in the beginning cutscenes. So that's not a spoiler. He shows up after the tutorial. And he's like, by the way, there's a traitor among you, and so that's basically what the story is hinging on. Here's where you get to change all of your equipment, so you can actually go ahead and look at all the characters. I'm not going to show off all of them in this, but basically they all have special, unique abilities, and they have these things called gifts um can i look at gifts in here yes i can so you get these like skill trees and stuff like that and you're able to actually like level them up we'll show how they actually work now the reason i'm showing this before i actually get into the game is because there's obviously a lot here but i'm only an hour into the game it's a jrpg which means it's going to be at least 30 hours i would assume most shorter jrpgs are about 20 hours and so you're going to at least get 20 hours so like there's 20 hours of leveling up and everything inside of here and some of the characters are really really unique while other ones so far are seem like they might be too similar like for example Agito here has a teleport ability I'll just go ahead and show him in game and there's also items and things like that I just unlocked crafting which basically you unlock a currency in the game when you're actually doing fights at this generator and you're able to generate stuff and basically it just acts like a currency it's kind of like an EN system that I remember from like Mega Man Legends and stuff which is actually pretty cool and then you can dissolve equipment so basically buying and selling they didn't really get too original with that which is a little bit disappointing um, some of the equipment and some of the fate stuff is actually kind of cool but we'll talk about that a little bit later but i'll go ahead and show him in game some of the characters are really interesting while other ones feel like kind of they're like buffs and things like that now there's two different types of missions there is no like open world or anything so far i don't know if there will be but there's supposedly a bunch of floors and there's 13 days until the world's ending but i don't see any sort of time limit and so i don't know if it just goes into like i guess you just get to do whatever you want which is a little bit disappointing as well which is so far my general opinion of this so far but anyways let's go ahead and just do i actually let's do ahead and do a main mission so we can show off some of the story stuff as well as the investigation goes on show can't shake his worries or the sense of imminent danger so there may be some minor spoilers in here but this is supposed to be more of a difficult fight so here is setting up for the missions and stuff like that like i said there's no open world so you're not running around finding random encounters instead you're going to these different sections inside of the tower and it's kind of like a replay system almost and so you get to select where you want to go and there's side missions and main missions and then you're able to either look at all the enemies so you can go look at them you're not able to like view stats or anything so you actually have to learn what these are i think gravis is like a melee attacker to where this guy is a range or maybe i got that backwards i think those are the range ones these ones are because fort sounds like physical and so that would probably be non-range these are little flying robots never seen that guy before i'm assuming he's like a boss he's level nine so yeah, basically, I wish you could actually see more info on them, but you learn what they are as you play, I assume. And then you're able to look at details for what the actual mission is. And when we actually get an S rank, we actually get a special reward. So there is like an incentive to actually do well. But anyways, so if we get to select from our 11 different characters, I don't know if there's more or less later on in the game. And I do say less because that's part of the story, I think. But anyways, we're going to have a Guido. We're going to put him... 
Um, we're gonna put him over here, I guess. I don't really know how to really synergize the characters yet because I haven't played that much of it. Like I said, an hour in, which is like three or four fights. Um, this guy's able to heal, but I don't really think I need a healer at these. Well, maybe I will. I don't know, I'll put him over here because I haven't really used him in fights. By the way, the more you talk to people, the more you use them, the more they, I guess, like you or something. I guess the main character is named Sho. And so he's able to just kind of like talk to everyone. He kind of acts as like, um, I haven't used him in a fight yet, aside from the beginning one. He's kind of weird, but I'm going to go use Mana because she's a stereotypical Japanese JRPG character. And we'll deploy, which will bring us into the fight. But yeah, I guess Sho is like the main character or something like that. And it's just like, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about these characters. Like I know very, very little. And I think that's supposed to be what the story hinges on. Everyone has their memory screwed up. I, I was right, by the way, that is a boss for Sho. What is that thing? It feels different from all the others we fought. <laughs> How do you read that? <laughs> Everyone stay on your guard. By the way, they actually have voice acting for half of it. Every single main story bit actually has, by the way, you can switch characters and stuff, but each sort of main, I'm just kind of like looking around the battlefield and seeing where we're at. Um, There is a bonus capsule over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and use her to kind of run over this way. And I need to turn down my volume as well, because this game is super loud for some reason, and my headphones won't go any quieter. All right, well, we're going to deal with that for a moment. Sorry if I end up... Oops, I hit the wrong button. Sorry if I end up yelling or something like that because of that. Um, but basically, the... Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the voice acting. Sorry, I got distracted for a second. The voice acting is kind of 50-50. During the main story, everyone has voice acting, but the quality is all over the place, which seems to be like what this game is about. It's not like a huge AAA game. Like it's not gonna be like your Final Fantasy or anything like that. But at the same time, what the heck was that? I've never used him in battle before, or I've never fought with him, I should say. I've used his items before, because he's a healer or whatever, but I've never actually attacked with him. I have no idea what he just said. This guy could teleport. Oh, and there's the performance drops. I should probably talk about those in a little bit. But yeah, the voice acting seems to be all over the place. Um, I do have... Oh, I didn't unlock an ability for him. Never mind. Gifts are basically your special attacks. It's pretty substandard for the, like, JRPGs. And the tactics are very, very simple as well so far. You're able to move, but you actually have this little kind of running down, like, little cone, which I actually like, so you can't just, like, run way away and then go around. So it's like not like you can run around objects and stuff. I think it forces you to go around on an object. The maps so far have not taken advantage of that. And so that's kind of unfortunate. But when you're actually running, you can actually see they turn blue when I can attack them. And then once I actually go to the edges of the range, I can only go there, which is actually fairly annoying. I wish it didn't do that, but I get why it does it. But they turn blue when you can actually attack them. And then they actually have a counter icon above them. When it says counter, it'll say that they can counter you. So when I attack him, he can attack back, but it'll also show assist over my allies. And that means that they will attack when I attack. And so you want to actually position all your characters. But back to the voice acting, there's little tiny voice clips everywhere in this game. And so when you select a character, when they get attacked, when they attack and stuff like that, and there's just, it's everywhere. It's actually fairly annoying because the music is also exactly the same way. And they repeat within the first like tutorial. I heard the same line like seven different times. And I'm like, all right, also, this guy is OP as living hell because he can double attack and he has high evasion, which means he has actually never taken damage. And now everyone's moving. You can only see the enemies moving if you can actually see them on your screen. I don't know if it actually moves them on the map or not yet, though, because I've only played through a few fights. Oh, nope, it didn't actually move him on the map yet until I could actually see him. So that's one thing. Also, oh, he finally got hit. That was his first piece of damage this entire game, and I've used him in every single fight. So since he's right next to him and actually got attacked, actually, I'm going to go ahead and run towards those items. The map does have, like, items and stuff like that. I'm not sure if they're worth going for, but I'm going for them anyways, just because JRPG is what we do. Anyways, everyone's going to attack this guy, so he's dead. But, like, the combat so far has been... Eh. Like, that seems to be everything in this game so far. It's just all... Yeah. Now, I am only an hour into the game, and so it's not going to be like, oh my god, I have the final verdict. It's not like a full review or anything. But so far, like, within the first hour, I'm not particularly not enjoying it. Also, this guy has super amounts of health. Can he die now? He's like that level 7 or level 8 or whatever. He's, he's, yeah, now he's dazed. So there is a sanity system, by the way. I've never actually been able to use it. So as, if you look down in the bottom right, you can actually see there's the health bar. GP is basically your magic, I guess you could say. And then also you have gifts that, able, that will use up all your GP, and then you have sanity. When you run out of sanity, oh, apparently I can't attack him yet. Why can't I attack him yet? Can I not shoot through allies? Is that how that works? 
I don't think I can shoot through allies. Good to know. So that adds in some technical element to positioning. But yeah, you also have hit rates and stuff like that, which is kind of nice as well to actually be able to see that. The range is not particularly great. But anyways, your sanity, when it runs out, supposedly... You, oh, whoa. I probably shouldn't go too far over there. But you, you get bonuses for back attack. So I want to hit him in the back. Double stab. Although it does turn him around, which means that he can get attacked in the back. Maybe that was a bad idea. You can't turn them around when you're actually attacking. Anyways. Yeah, so basically, so far... I forgot what I was talking about because I just got super distracted because I learned like six new things in one little second. Oh yeah, sanity. When you run out of sanity, supposedly you get dazed. I don't know if it has any other sort of effects to it or not. And if it doesn't, I'm actually going to be fairly disappointed because the entire game so far has kind of gone on the whole idea of everyone's psychic and you're kind of like messing around with things like that. Can I get out of his range? I can. I like this guy because he can shoot people from out of range. I missed. Oh wait, it didn't have a counter attack above his head. All right, whatever. Let's go ahead and see if we can grab this item. So there on the field, you're able to open things. I haven't found anything that's like interactable that actually does anything yet. Also, this character has buffs, so I probably should have made her run over there instead. Oops, didn't mean to run already. Also, the camera is really, really close up too. The game's field of view is very, very low. Actually, I don't want to use him yet. I want to use... Actually, no, I do want to use him because I can use him at range. And then when the melee chick goes in, it'll deal more damage and actually have multiple counterattacks with the range characters, I think. I don't know, he's a range character, so it doesn't really matter, but if he was melee, I guess it would matter. I don't really know. I'm not really like too far into the game to actually figure out all the tactics or not. I guess he's throwing the blade as well. Like some of the animations are very, very lacking, especially when they dodge. It doesn't actually play any dodge animation, which is very, very upsetting. I don't want to play you yet. There we go. I'm going to hit you in the back because I'm a girl. <laughs> has no reference to it whatsoever. Back attack, critical, doomed. So she's a stereotypical, has the high-pitched voice, and she does melee attacks instead of actually attacking normally. He's within range, right? But Oh, wait, it doesn't show assist until I actually hit attack. I don't know if he's actually going to assist or not. Nope, apparently not. I don't understand 100%. Maybe it's because I'm standing in the way. The hitboxes might be a little bit off, maybe? I don't know, but here comes the boss guy. Is he going to kill somebody? Also, you can see them standing in the background. So, yeah, apparently he's dead. I don't know if that actually has any cause for effect or anything. I think he's just out of the fight now. I'm sure this game doesn't have permadeath. That would be kind of fun, though. That would be interesting. That would actually make this game immediately more interesting. But you can't actually move after you attack either. And so you have to attack. And then that's basically where you stand. So uh, he's AKA screwed. All right. So we grabbed the item that way. Now we're running this way. And you can actually see on the minimap as well. I just now noticed it actually shows a little zoom down thing. So it zooms down to where you're actually running towards. I like that a lot. I really hope the maps actually use that in their design because that would actually be pretty cool. Oh, we can't defer until somebody has actually moved. So there's a system called defer, which... Oh, I want to switch characters. There we go. I'm still learning the controls. There's a system called Deferred where you can make a character move twice. I just now realized she's low on health, so I'm going to leave her there. She's going to use Sand Heal, which is basically re increasing her sanity when you wait. But I'm going to use his gift, use Heal, and I can reach her, thankfully. Heal, there you go. Yeah, and then I'm going to use this guy to run up here. Hope like hell that I can reach her. Yeah, there we go. And then I'm going to Defer. What Defer does is it lowers your sanity, but it makes the other person be able to take a second turn. You can't use it if they're using their first turn, so yeah. Also, I can't reach, so that was completely useless. But I'm gonna wait! Yay! Increase your sanity! So I think the sanity system is more or less a stamina system to where basically once you run out of sanity, it's just like, nah, you can't do anything anymore. Also, this guy, apparently he dodged. I really wish there was more animations. Also, the graphics are not particularly great. The game does not support anti-aliasing. So if you're looking at this and being like, wow, that looks jaggy as hell, I don't think it will in the video because this is actually, it does support nice resolutions. If I go into the config here, you can actually see this is all the graphics options you get. Display resolution. It goes up all the way to max resolution, but like it doesn't actually like, I don't know. It doesn't have any anti-aliasing, doesn't have any Aniso, and I couldn't force anti-aliasing into my graphics driver, but it does support borderless and stuff like that. And you get a nice selection of volume sliders and stuff like that, which is nice. And you also get tech speed and stuff like that. I need to make this instant, but I'm going to leave it on normal for now for when we actually go in there. Um, link control, set whether or not the left stick and the directional buttons act the same in battle. I don't actually know. I've never used the... Uh, the D-pad doesn't even work in battle, so I don't actually know. I think it's so that you can use the left stick to actually do what the D-pad does. 
Not 100% sure. Can I actually use my gift through the wall? I don't think so. I'm gonna use this on her just because I can. Because it's like animation time. The camera also has a bunch of clipping as well, which is also super, super annoying, I will say. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and kill this guy. So gift, impact. They really should have said like, this is special ability, but the story is they're psychics. And so I think it's supposed to be like, oh, it's a gift because you know, they're psychics or something. I'm not gonna go with him first. I'm gonna use this guy, make sure that I can kill this person. And there we go, we get an assist. I think some of the like hitbox detection might be off a little bit whenever you're like at a certain range or something. I don't know. It seems a little weird to, cause sometimes I don't really know if an enemy is going to assist or not. And I don't know if there's like some sort of like friendship system or anything because you do have something like that. On my way. Because when you actually talk to NPCs and stuff like that, they actually get those extra bonus, like, um, they, I think it's called comrade or something like that. I can't actually say the word, I apologize. I'm not the best at English. But uh, yeah, basically they actually increase their friendship with you or whatever. Oh, I can't defer. Why can't I defer? Can I just not reach somebody? Maybe I can only do it once per battle. That makes sense. And I can't undo all everything that I did. So that's a thing. Anyways, coil shot. We're going to coil shot this dude. Bam, 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 bam. Animations, once again, they're just so lacking. Like that's, that's one of my main problems with it is the game, the story wise, we'll get into the story a little bit, I guess. It's like the story wise, it's not really interesting to me so far. It's like, oh my God, this guy, he's called the end and he's destroying the world basically. And he's like, there's 13 days until he like has nukes that blow up the entire remaining bit of the planet. And uh, at the beginning of the game, this giant tower comes out and like it's, he's at the top of the tower and he's like, there's a traitor among you and stuff. It's, it gives me no reason to actually care about literally anybody in the game so far though. And so basically I'm playing through the game for the gameplay at this point and it's, once again, camera all over the place. This game lacks a lot of polish. That's one of my main problems with it. Here's one of those points though, to where you can actually see like, oh, hey, I get what they're doing. You know, you can only move within a certain range, but you can kind of cheese it a little bit, I noticed. But like at the same time, that's kind of cool. I like that. I really like that idea. I just hope they actually use it really, really well. Um, I can't attack him. So I'm gonna go ahead and defer and then he can actually attack. Also, he's almost dead, so I could use it to retreat, but screw it, I don't care about his life. I really don't care about these characters whatsoever. And that's the main problem with the story so far. I don't care whatsoever about the characters or about the world. And they're like, oh, we'll talk to your favorite characters to like increase their friendship and get special dialogues. And I'm like, why? Why would I care? Why would I care about these characters? Why, why anything? Like, it's just, it gives you no reason to care whatsoever. And the enemies are just generic robot people and stuff. And I'm like, all right, that's pretty much it. Also, they have little dialogues going on up there. I just now realized I didn't see that. I could revive him. I'm not going to. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to have a cause or anything like that. And I'm kind of interested, which is why I'm not going to. Also, this guy is freaking destroying us. Gift heal. I can't he like reach you so I can hold down the X button. This was confusing at first. I didn't actually see the button prompts. Because for me, this is a personal problem. And when it comes down to UIs, I don't like it when UIs are too big because I'm on a fairly large monitor. Also, I don't think that worked very well. Nope. Why didn't she? Wait, did I click on the wrong person? Did I just like completely screw that up? I guess so. Hold on. Let me see if I actually have a revive item. For me personally, though, there we go. Um, all right. Vibes and conjured and barely restores HP. I can actually move while doing that. I didn't know that the first time. I did try recording this in my old style that I was doing for this type of video to where I just kind of go into the game blind. Trust me, it would not have been an interesting video. It was god awful. But for the most part, it was like one of those situations to where like I didn't understand everything. And it was mostly because I wasn't actually reading most of the UI. I want to revive her. It's going to be completely pointless, but it'll make it so I have one extra person to attack. All right, let's see. Heal. Um, I might have just not reached her. Now, if I do heal, how much does it heal? Oh, maybe it just didn't heal enough. That's probably what it was. She's just going to get shot, isn't she? Nope, he's going to get shot. Welp, have fun on the ground. <laughs> he enjoys it, I'm sure. He's a very fun and happy guy. So I know somewhat about the characters and stuff like that. But once again, the story just doesn't interest me whatsoever. I just... Eh. And I mean, that whole traitor thing that I was talking about, like they, they spill that out so quickly and they already spoil it so quickly. Now, obviously they could be like screwing with you and be like, haha, well, this is, the, it was really this guy instead. And that sort of thing, or this girl, I guess, cause there's male and female characters. 
But at the same time, I just don't care. Like, I don't care if there's a traitor. I have no correlation, like, with anything in this game so far. The only character I like the best right now is Mana, because she's the stereotypical, I am cheerful, but I'm also a melee chick, and I punch things. And so that's basically all I've got. And so, like, she's my favorite character so far just because of that, because she's the only one with some, like, shining personality. I guess the teleportation dude, he's all, like, about being happy and stuff like that, and I kind of like his character a little bit, but at the same time, he's got this, like, whole mysterious mystiques thing kind of going on to where he's like, I don't want to fight anybody, but I also want to kill everyone sort of thing going on, and I'm not really necessarily sure about what's going on there. I'm not a fan of that, but anyways... Yeah, so here's more combat. I mean, I guess I can talk about the, like, performance issues. I don't have any more of those capsules, so basically... We're going blind so far. Um, who do I have to attack? Everyone? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move you over. Wow, that is filling up my screen, which is dialogue that I don't care about. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this. There's also AoE attacks as well, like there's sweep attacks and stuff like that. I just don't have any of them unlocked. I have, like... It's unlocked for the people who have SMGs, and so they can just kind of, like, spray and pray, which is kind of cool. I kind of like the idea of having a turn-based um jrpg that is actually like let's say i don't know with guns and stuff like that i thought that was pretty cool oh i could have showed the sweep attack right there whoops anyways you can see it on there it just has like a big aoe cone from the character target and stuff like that obviously we're gonna win this fight but yeah the game has a few technical weird problems for one when i started up the game it tore like freaking crazy so i had to force on v-sync in the graphics driver even in borderless window it was still kind of tearing which was really really weird and here's the end screen. I've also had weird performance drops. In my single hour of play, randomly in combat, it would drop down to 15 FPS and hold there until I actually hit start. Also, um, you get these little scores and stuff like that. So like there's a scoreboard and it like gives you like kills and deaths and things like that, which is kind of funny. And so they give you a ranking based on all of these. And so the more you actually use like supportive like supportive things heals or assists or you get like um kills and things like that it actually increases your score while things like deaths actually or getting status effects as well will decrease your score and i'm not 100 sure on the like status effect thing because i only had one battle to where i did it and you still had positive points but it did say negative on the right side so i assume that it gives you negative score not 100 sure and then it shows your number of turns and it gives you a ranking which is kind of nice and they give you rewards for getting an s rank here's the xp the people that are in the fight actually get more experience than the people who are not in the fight which i actually like some people hate that i enjoy it because i like to make it so that you can kind of have like a balance and everything like that because a lot of these type of games they have it so a character is out here's a little bit of the story bit um so this guy this is only an hour into the game so if you want absolutely no spoilers whatsoever go ahead and just like not look at the monitor i'm not going to say any spoilers but basically the main character that you're playing here um basically has this sort of situation oh yeah it's gonna do voices okay so whatever i'm gonna go ahead and make voices so that you can't hear any of that <laughs> i think it's done anyway so you can i think you can look back at the screen now well i guess it's still gonna do story bits yeah don't look at the screen yet basically there's there's story stuff i'm gonna go ahead and just hit auto and like it's not gonna go through auto because they're not talking because they don't have voice acting in this section okay you know what one second i'm just gonna go ahead and well actually no hold on i'm still trying to figure out this format if you want to hear this stuff, keep watching. Otherwise, mute it and wait for me to not... I don't know how to do that. How do you do spoilers? I guess you would just skip it. Regardless, we're in an hour in the game. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So anyways, hmm, we couldn't transfer to the area before. Room of Judgment? Oh. That's not a spoiler. <laughs> That's content unlock. <laughs> so this is why it's called checking out. Anyways, caution, progress will be saved. There is no going back. Really? You're going to make it so that I can, like... Oh, I get what that is. Okay, so I'm going to assume it's going to save it when you go in there. I'm going to assume there's no more main stories. Yeah, okay. So basically, it's going to ask who the traitor is, I assume, because they ended up doing that in the beginning, and I assume you select who the traitor is. I don't think they're going to kill off a character yet. I mean, I know this game is going to eventually, because all these types of games normally do. Or they're going to make it so he leaves a party, or they introduce new party members. The cut beginning cutscene actually had more than 11 characters in it, but I don't know if some of them are just, like, main story stuff. But anyways, yeah, so basically, I think that's what that is. So that's going to be like, oh, we're going to ascend to the next floor, but it's going to ask you, like, oh, who's the traitor? And then it's going to affect everyone's, like, dialogues based off of that, I assume, because that seems to be what it is. When you go to the dialogue thing, you can actually see after every single fight, it'll give you certain characters. Now, the blue one means that it's going to increase your relationship with them, because Sho is the main character, I guess, and uh, he might be the traitor. I'm not 100% sure yet. La la la. But, um, yeah, so basically... 
you talk to them and then they'll get bonuses. The yellow ones are the extra ones. So I talked to Mana first time last time. And so this time it gave me a special dialogue and it is based off of a relationship status, which I assume is by the neutral face there. I assume games at least 20 hours. And so it's going to have like different dialogues. And then as you go down, you get less bonuses based on them. So the first two that you talk to get a bonus and the other ones don't. And so it actually gives you some stuff. Did we get any items from that? We got new gifts so we can actually level up the gifts. So this is how the gifting system works. You're able to level up different skills and stuff like that. So the main guy show this takes a long time. So I'm only going to do his, but you go ahead and use it and you unlock it. There's different like level requirements. And so in order to learn my lock on skill, which is actually an ability, you can read what it does and everything. I had to actually level up the previous skill to a certain level. This seems a little bit grindy, but at the same time, it's kind of nice to be able to have some nice customization in a JRPG again when it comes down to skills, because there's actually different branches with different characters. And so, for example, some of them will be like, oh, well, this is going to be like your tanky side. And then this is going to be your like attack side or like um, what's one character that has two sort of ways. Um, I guess this one has two sort of ways. So this character right here called Zenji, he's able to link with different characters and he has like a charge link and he's able to like go into tanky and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, I don't know. Some of the characters and stuff like that, I do like some of the customization that they have in here, but at the same time, it seems very limiting at this point in the game. And I don't know how long it's going to take to actually get a bunch of those because you only get a gift point every two levels or something like that. So it's kind of weird. But yeah, aside from the technical problems and the kind of lack of polish, the game's all right so far. I mean, as a closing comment, it's it's all right. I mean, it's nothing really shouting out to me. I'm not really interested in playing more of it. It doesn't have an open world. It doesn't give me any reason to care about the character so far, but that could change because this is like an early impression sort of thing. It's it's one of those situations to where as the game progresses, it could end up getting better but I'm not sure how much the reception so far, especially according to other reviewers and like steam reviewers and things like that. Obviously I didn't go through like reading a bunch of reviews, but like so far it seems like the game is just kind of meh. Like it's, it's not a bad game. It's a good game, but at the same time, it's nothing like extremely unique that you're going to be like, Oh my God, I must play this sort of game. It's just one of those games to where like, if you're running at a games play or it might catch your fancy, like one thing that I kind of like to compare it to is that it's kind of like, um, one of those like more older style tactics RPGs and those ones that kind of had some lacking animations and they were a little bit janky here and there, but they still had some like personality to it. I do like that they have a nice variety in the characters and stuff like that, but at the same time, it gives me no reason to care about any of them. And so it's just one of those situations to where I'm just kind of playing through the game and just seeing where it goes from there. And now we're into the game. I'm not really drawn into it. And when it gets down to that two hour point, that's a point where I say, like, if this game isn't drawing me, I'm definitely out at that point. And there's very, very few games that end up picking up after that. Now this game oh, here, I'm getting some of that stuttering issue that I was talking about. Um, when I first enter in a map, it ends up stuttering a ton. Um, whenever can I use lock on? Oh, it also doesn't show the ranges for your abilities until you actually move into range of enemies, which is a little bit upsetting. But I bet if I move over here, they might not move. I think we're supposed to activate something. I forgot to look at view my victory while serving. Oh, just defeat all enemies. OK, so there's an unknown device there, but they're not actually using it. I don't know if that's going to be a normal thing or not. But yeah, as a closing comment so far, it's been all right. I mean, there's <laughs> When it comes down to JRPGs, there's a big mixed bag when it comes to PC because there's people like me that have played 90% of them. And so we're running out of games to play. But at the same time, there's also a lot of them for people that haven't. Like I just finished Tales of Bazeria and I'm working on my final review for it, which should be out in like a week or two. And like, or maybe less, uh, depends if I finish Sonic Mania first or not. And I'm currently playing through... Um, Valkyrie Chronicles again, which is an absolutely fantastic turn-based thing. Also, here's the camera going all wonky again. I guess they're just going to stand there, which is perfectly fine. And it's going to go and zoom in through each one of them. But it doesn't really signify which one is actually moving until they're actually moving. Once again, this game lacks a lot of polish. And there's a lot of JRPGs on PC now that actually have a ton of polish. Also, if I attack, are they both going to counter me? I am curious, so we're going to go ahead and find out. I think only that one counters. Yeah, only one of them counters. Wait, why did I run this way? I ran the wrong way when I was playing him. Whoops, there's a wall there, and I don't know how to... Oops. I don't know how to get by the wall. I do like how he teleports and stuff like that. Now, we haven't actually had the one performance bug to where performance just drops, but yeah, anyways, I'm just going to leave it at that. Like, that's... That's my impression so far. It's all right. I mean, it's nothing, like, amazing or anything. It's not really drawing me in, but I do know that some people do enjoy it quite a bit. 
And so if you are somebody that is into tactical JRPGs, I mean, it's worth at least looking at. Also, I don't... Oh, you know what I could do? So this is just one of the problems with this, if, with not doing a full review, is I can actually use the ability and then hold X to move around. I don't know why I don't remember that. That's something from, like, Disgaea. Um, Disgaea does it. Um, what other games do it? I guess Neptunia does it as well, but they don't have, like, a hold down button thing. Go away! I, I've never actually used this ability. I'm kind of curious what it does. So yeah, anyways, wow, that did a lot of damage. I think I might like him. <laughs> anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this one. It's it's an alright game. I mean, that's really it. I did get a review key for this one, so I didn't end up buying it. Some people are saying it's fairly cheap for what it is. I mean, it was only $15 when I looked at it. It does have a bunch of little DLC, which is like some bonus maps and stuff like that, which I assume is endgame challenges, which is pretty standard for JRPGs these days. They kind of throw those into every JRPG there is. I mean, even Tales of Azeria has DLC day one and everything, which is a little bit disappointing. I mean, consoles actually got it like leaking out. And so it was like, oh, this week there's this and then this week there's that. But then they moved to PC. They're just like, nah, here's all the DLC now. Also, he is getting the Botox kicked out of him. He's getting shot a lot. That's fine. I don't really like him anyways. His name's George. <laughs> wow. He's getting destroyed because they're all assist attacking on him. That was probably the worst move I could have made. There we go. He got to counter. He's like, oh, that might have been a bad idea. I probably shouldn't have even brought any sort of melee characters into this whatsoever. But anyways, now that I have range, especially if I outrange them, I feel like the AI could be cheated quite a bit as well. I don't know how advanced the AI is. But yeah, I think that's going to be me for this one. It's, it's all right. I don't know. Can I just... You know what? I might have chosen the perfect character to go grab this because that's a wall. I assume other characters might not be able to pass through that wall. I might be wrong. You might be able to just walk past it, but I just teleport. I was going to say like, oh, you could just pass right through it. I just realized I'm playing the character that can teleport. I don't know if that actually plays into the gameplay mechanics or not, but if it does, that's actually really, really cool. If they actually implement like story reasons and like actually like really, really cool sort of level layouts and stuff like that, that would be cool. I haven't seen any of that in any of the reviews and stuff like that, like any of the mini reviews that I looked at from the Steam page or whatever. No one ended up mentioning that. I only looked at a few of them. Like I don't actually go through and read reviews anymore. But for the most part, I haven't really seen much of that. But if they actually do that, like near the end game and stuff like that, that would be really freaking cool. But anyways, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, like I said, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I don't I don't know if I'll keep playing this. Maybe I'll like throw it up every once in a while, maybe if I get bored or something, but I have so many games to check out and it's just not grabbing me so far. So my verdict is I mean, if you like tactical JRPGs and you don't have any others to play, probably. I mean, there's a lot of lower quality JRPGs as well that are way below this one. Like this one actually has like full anime cutscenes and stuff like that. So it's not terrible. I just want to make sure that that's clear. It's not a terrible game. It's just not one that's too enthralling. So it's just kind of unfortunate. Anyways, see you later.